So today's video is all about Vancouver's hottest neighborhood. It's been that way for years, but it's especially hot right now. And it's not just one particular housing type. It's not just houses, it's not just condos or townhouses. It's all of the above. And that's very unlike any other neighborhood in the city. It very much is an incredibly high demand area and very little supply, unfortunately. So I'm going to get into the area, where it is. We're going to look at a map. We're going to sit down. I'm going to show you what the highlights of the neighborhood are. I'm going to show you um, the pros and the cons and uh, what kind of housing types are available. And at the very end, I'm also going to share with you some of the hidden gems of the neighborhood, the things that I love most of all. So if you want to check out those, stay tuned. We're going to get into it right now. Let's get into the pros and the cons. Why do people love Riley Park so much? Why is it such a popular destination, both in terms of people living, in terms of people hanging out? What makes Riley Park tick? So in terms of pros, really, as we saw on the map, it's so incredibly central to the rest of the city. And if you live there, if you need to get around in the city, you're probably going to prioritize a central location. It's one of the things that I love about this neighborhood is that you know, you're, you can get downtown in 15 minutes, you can get out to the airport in 15 minutes, you can get out to UBC, well, maybe that's 25 minutes. Uh, you can get up into the mountains and have 40 minutes or so. Oh, and sorry, I almost forgot about the highway. I mean, getting out uh, out of the city entirely, um, you know, it, it uh, probably takes about 20 minutes to get to the highway. If you're living in some parts of the west side of the Vancouver, of Vancouver, a little bit deeper, you could take probably 45 minutes to get to the highway. So central location, I think, is a big one. Number two, it's just an incredibly walkable neighborhood. Um, so again, going back, thinking about the map, and you saw how close Main Street is to Fraser, there's only four blocks between them. Technically, it only goes a couple more blocks west and four or five blocks further east. And so the dynamic parts of the neighborhood are always within reach. I'd say nothing is more than a 10 to 15 minute walk from anyone living in that zone. So whether that's getting to the bus, uh, getting to school, uh, getting to the grocery store or a pharmacy or buying flowers, all of that is really within a 15 minute walk or so. So an incredibly walkable neighborhood, which I find a lot of people really prioritize these days. So number three is a neighborhood feel. Uh, to be honest, it reminds me a lot of the neighborhood that I grew up in when I was a kid, which was Carisdale, and was sort of this idyllic family neighborhood. That's the way Riley Park really is. Like when you're walking the streets, when you're driving by, you just see all sorts of different types of people getting along, talking, interacting. You see people doing work on their houses, pride of ownership. You see people gardening, taking care of their yards, mowing the lawn. Everything is just really well taken care of. And basically all the things that come together to create a neighborhood are happening in this neighborhood, in Riley Park, Little Mountain. And then number four is being family friendly. There's just really so much in that neighborhood that is catered towards families, whether it's the parks with the playgrounds, uh, the splash parks, whether it's being centrally located and not having to go that far, having great schools surrounded by elementary schools and good uh, secondary schools or daycares. What else do we have? And oh, and, and just in general that it's a very safe neighborhood. So you can open the door and let your kids run outside to play with the neighbor's kids um, just down the block. And you don't really have to worry that something's gonna happen to them. I was interacting with somebody just the other day and they were talking about how they don't get that feeling living downtown and that they're, you know, they might come out of the building that they live in. Somebody might be trying to get into the building or there might be somebody who's doing some drugs uh, right outside the building and that makes them and their children feel uncomfortable. Those are not the types of experiences that you will have living in a place like Riley Park, Little Mountain. Now, it's not all sunshine. Uh, there are obviously some cons. It honestly took me a while to think of cons. I had to come up with at least three though, so I did my best. But number one, and most obviously, is that it's an expensive neighborhood. And we're gonna get into that more when we talk about the housing type. It's not the most inexpensive part of the city. Um, having said that, it's also not the most expensive. So it's sort of this happy middle ground, great value considering how desirable the neighborhood is, 
and how many people want to be here and how much the neighborhood really offers at the end of the day. Other areas of the city are really lacking in the ways that Riley Park uh, really deliver. Number two con would be that it's not really walkable to the SkyTrain. The SkyTrain's not conveniently located to this area. Um, so there is gonna be a SkyTrain running around along Broadway. Um, Riley Park run uh, goes up to 16th, so you're five or six blocks from Broadway at the, at the northernmost end. And then uh, there's also a SkyTrain line that runs along Canby Street. The Canada line runs along Canby Street um, and, and that would get you very quickly downtown or out to the, uh, out to Richmond and the International Airport. But that again is a number of blocks further west than the, the western limit of Riley Park. And we're talking, I don't know, maybe it's 10 blocks or so. Uh, so it's not a crazy walk, but it's, it's probably a, you know, from the outer edge, you're probably looking at a 15 to 20 minute walk to get to the SkyTrain. But, you know, most people are still, you're probably gonna have a car, but you don't need one because it's walkable. Um, the bus system is great. It can get you to the SkyTrain pretty quickly. Um, of course, there's also Evo and other kinds of car shares that can get you there very quickly as well. And biking, cycling. Um, so lots of people use those options when they're trying to get around. But I would say if there's one way that the neighborhood could really improve would be easier access to the SkyTrain system. And number three, uh, it's not really conveniently located to the beaches. And uh, I guess I have that on my mind because it's summer right now and it would be a nice time of year to, to have a beach much closer. But yeah, it's it's probably to get to uh, Jericho as an example, probably takes you about half an hour. It's not the easiest. You're sort of cutting across the city. And then there's New Brighton Park, which is the East Vancouver beach access. Probably takes you about the same amount of time, uh, roughly. Um, so not the easiest to get to a beach if that's what you want to want to do but really i would say as you can tell pros in little mountain far outweigh the cons in my mind i'll let you make up your own mind about that and incidentally if you have other pros or cons that i didn't think about i'd love to hear them put them down in the comments below and let's get back to the video riley park really outdoes itself in terms of amenities so i'm going to talk about some of the the really big standouts in the neighborhood the things that are that are draws not just for the people that live here but also for people from other parts of the city and and really you know i'd say main street in particular but fraser as well have become kind of you know the cool part of the city it is where most people want to be uh, or at least hang out for some part of you know their week so you'll find you know people that live in yale town commercial drive and caresdale they'll come to main street to shop, to hang out, to go to the coffee shops, to go to the restaurants. So in terms of restaurants, uh, we have some of the best in Canada. In fact, some of the best in the world. Michelin just awarded a few of the restaurants in the area, Michelin stars. The one that comes to mind most of all is Published. Uh, it's an amazing restaurant, fantastic drinks. Uh, it's a little pricey, I won't, can't deny that, but you know, the, with the, the recognition, it's probably not undeserved that it's also rather expensive. There's a really great variety of restaurants, I would say, throughout um, Little Mountain, and uh, a lot of ethnic restaurants. An and Chi is one of my favorite re uh, Vietnamese restaurants. It's It's got a little more modern flair to it, uh, but absolutely amazing if you are a, a fan of pho, or I think it's supposed to be pronounced pho, but uh, but I think I still go with pho. Um, the, uh, unless somebody Vietnamese corrects me, I'm going with pho, but An and Chi is amazing. Uh, there's a great Indian restaurant. Uh, my favorite is Sula on Main Street as well. Uh, Grub is kind of a home cooking, just high quality, great place to hang out. Um, no frills really a really solid neighborhood restaurant, um, which I really enjoy. And a couple other favorites, more on the Fraser Street side, Dario Salvio Volpe and Les Faux Bourgeois. And then there's a number of really good pizza places, but my favorite is Pizza Carano. Uh, but so many fantastic restaurants throughout the area, you can't go wrong. Um, it's hard really to leave the neighborhood to go to a restaurant because there's so many really good options. And then coffee shops. Uh, I could go on and on about coffee because if you've been watching this for a little bit, you probably know how much I love my coffee. It might seem like I've had a little too much at the moment, but I swear it was just one cup today. Matchstick is one of the favorite neighborhood ones. Uh, there's a couple in the neighborhood. 
of those. There's um, Continental Coffee House, which is uh, another big standout. It's originally from uh, on Commercial Drive, but it has uh, a storefront on uh, on Main Street as well. Uh, Prado is one of my real favorites. It's not just um, coffee. It also has some amazing food there too. If you if you just want a quick lunch or a quick bite, JJ Bean, and uh, I think now that's becoming one of the busiest places in the neighborhood is Breca, and uh, Breca is a place where you can really indulge your sweet tooth. Uh, get real, you know, if you need a little extra padding for the winter months, that's a good place to go and spend a, an afternoon working your way through their display case because it's hard to say no in a place like Breca. I gotta say. You know, I don't just make videos, I also sell real estate. Yeah, that's right, I'm, I'm a real estate agent. Been in the business for 15 years, I've helped hundreds of families. I'm not joking, literally hundreds of families move to Vancouver over my career. And I can help you too. If you're thinking of moving here, whether it's to Main Street, whether it's Riley Park or not, I can help you find the right neighborhood. I understand the neighborhoods just like uh, Main Street all around Vancouver. So if you're looking to move, just reach out anytime. My contact information is right there on the screen and we can get that ball rolling. Now let's get back to the video. Now in terms of shopping, there's a lot of shopping that can be had on Main Street. And as I mentioned, there's no real big box retailers. So you have a really interesting diversity of, of shops and services in the area. And they're all, you know, really funky, interesting places. So there's Neptune Records and Red Cat Records, uh, two fantastic record stores if you're into vinyl. There's Front and Company which is fashion. It's where all the ladies go. I know my wife likes to go there. They do some consignment, some vintage wear at, at Front and Company. Super popular store. There's Welks. Welks is one of my favorite stores. Just about anything that you want, whether it's, uh, I don't know, beard oil or um, chocolate or um, uh, plants, uh, or I buy my favorite coffee, mocha coffee, I buy from Welks. Yeah, it's just a, it's sort of like one of those old, I imagine what in the Old West would have been a general store. That's essentially what Welks is. So if you haven't been there before, definitely check that out. West Coast Kids is a fantastic and pretty pricey, I gotta say, but a very good fun kids store. You can unload plenty of money on your kids if you shop there you'll want to because everything is so beautiful. Ernest Ice Cream needs an honorable mention because it's one of my favorite places and my kids' favorite places. It's absolutely divine. I don't think I've been there yet this year. That uh, I need to make a mental note that I gotta take the kids out to Ernest Ice Cream sometime soon because it is the middle of summer as I'm making this video. And then uh, the other thing that's worth mentioning is that grocery stores. We don't really have the enormous, as I said, big box grocery stores uh, uh, in Riley Park, Little Mountain. But what you have is quite a number of smaller grocery stores, whether that's uh, a No Frills, a Nesters, uh, the East West Market. There's more that I am forgetting, uh, but there's a number of fantastic smaller grocers all throughout the area. And so because of that, they're all walkable and easy to get to for the people that live in the neighborhood. And then what about nightlife? Well, the truth is, there is actually nightlife around. There's plenty of good bars. Uh, there's Portland Craft as an example. There's a Legion. Uh, every good Canadian city has got to have their, its legions. And there's also one of my favorite places uh, is the Shameful Tiki. It's a, it's a pretty cool, funky place. It, it looks pretty obscure from the outside. You don't know what's going on inside, but inside it is essentially a, a old school tiki bar and uh, everything is rum and everything is incredibly delicious in that place. And then you're not too far. Mount Pleasant is just down the hill. Some of my favorite hangouts and bars are, are in that area, the Cascade Room, gotta say, and downtown is only 15 minutes away. And then you also have all the breweries just down on Main Street, pretty much. Brewery Row, uh, and so if you wanna check out some craft brews, uh, you just gotta head you know, an extra five, 10 blocks outside of Riley Park to, to find the breweries. In terms of nightlife, in terms of going out, I mean, there are no clubs. So it's, it's not geared towards the older teens or the 20 year olds. What you're gonna find is sort of ge more geared towards the 30 to 50 some odd years. It's a little more uh, refined, it's a little quieter, but there's places for you to go out, to have fun, to go on a date, to spend time with your buddies, all within walking distance if you want it, uh, or you know, driving or Ubering, taxiing a little bit further will, will open up your options tremendously. I just wanted to mention some of the hidden gems, some of the things that I think people miss sometimes in the neighborhood. 
One of them would be Marche St. George. It's just a, it's an old corner store. It's uh, kind of looks like it's falling apart a little bit, but it has so much charm. The people there are absolutely lovely. Uh, the coffee is amazing and the baked goods are even better. And it's just a fun place to hang out. You know, sometimes I'll head down there with the kids and um, we'll hang out outside. Uh, kids will play, they'll meet some friends and uh, I'll talk to some of the neighbors. It's a nice place to, to spend a couple hours on a weekend. The Bloedel Conservatory is something that even a lot of Vancouverites don't really know exist. And I think it's pretty amazing. And especially in the middle of winter, because I, I don't know if you've noticed, I hate being cold. Uh, and when you walk into the Bloedel Conservatory, what it is is a tropical paradise. And they have all sorts of tropical birds uh, living in the jungle under the, the dome on the top of Queen Elizabeth Park. It might be minus 10 outside, but it's plus 30 and like 99% humidity as soon as you walk in the door. Um, so it's a really fun activity I find for, for children and a really great way to, to warm up in the, the freezing cold and bone drenching rain that we might suffer through from November to February and maybe the odd snowfall. And then I'm actually going to take you to my favorite hidden gem in the neighborhood. We're going to head outside and check out my absolute favorite hidden gem in Riley Park right now. One of my favorite parts of Little Mountain is uh, the Little Mountain Cemetery. It's uh, Vancouver's only uh, active cemetery. I think it's the only one in the city at all. And it's pretty massive. It runs from that's 31st all the way past 41st north to south and then from Fraser over to Prince Edward. And uh, it's just a, a really peaceful, beautiful space. And I kind of view it as many Vancouverites do these days as a, as a, uh, as a park. It's an opportunity to, to find a quiet spot for uh, a bit of a break from the rest of the world. Very peaceful, uh, lots of wide open spaces, beautiful views. I don't know if in the background you can see the mountains uh, right behind me. Uh, in, in the winter months, you see those snow topped and it's absolutely stunning. You can see if you get the, uh, the angle right, downtown Vancouver over my right hand shoulder as well. I can't see it right now, but um, you know, I spend time walking through here. My kids uh, have learned how to ride their bikes in the cemetery. Um, and, uh, and you see a lot of people sort of going for runs, walking together. Um, just enjoying some quiet, peaceful time. And uh, it's one of, I think, really one of the hidden gems of Vancouver. And another amazing thing about Riley Park is that there's parks everywhere. They're scattered throughout the neighborhood. So we have small parks and big parks right at our doorstep. And the small ones include Prince Edward Park. You know, one of my favorite things about Prince Edward Park is uh, an amazing splash park. Um, so it's a great place. We'll head down there on our bikes and on a, on a summer, hot summer day and let the kids play in the, at the Splash Park. Um, there's Gray's Park, uh, which my daughter calls the Dancing Lady Park because there's a troop of older Chinese ladies, I believe, do a little dance class every Saturday morning, I think it is. Um, but we love it because it offers two separate parks, one for older kids and one for the younger kids. And that's great for my four kids because I got two older ones and two little ones. Um, and then there's uh, Riley Park, uh, which has two parks as well, actually two kids playgrounds, big open fields. Uh, there's uh, at Riley Park, there's also a Riley Park and Hillcrest sort of combined. At Riley Park, there's a weekly farmer's market and uh, it gets bigger in the summer months. It happens year round. In the winter months, it gets a little smaller, uh, but there's all sorts of really great farm to table stuff. Uh, Farmers bringing in their wares, good places to get food and baked goods. Uh, great, fun Saturday morning activity as well. Then we have Cartier Park, and that's another little neighborhood park in the, in the area with uh, a fun little playground and a sports field. Uh, it can't go wrong with any of these parks, really. And then, of course, we have the big park, which is Queen Elizabeth Park, and it's the highest point in the city. So it's, it's one of the big tourist attractions in the city outside of downtown and people usually go there for the views. It's got a quarry garden um, and a rose garden and, and in fact the, the stone that comes from that quarry was used to uh, as the cobblestone um, in Gastown and some parts of Kitsilano but what was left is turned into this amazing beautiful garden. It's really stunning uh, pretty much throughout the year but it's it's an amazing place just to wander. Um, 
to have some quiet time uh, away from the city uh, and to enjoy the views. Um, there's a great restaurant uh, up there as well. Um, there's frisbee golf, uh, pitch and putt, and of course there's just walking. Uh, so highly recommend checking out um, Queen, Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth Park if you ever get the chance. And then a major community center in the area is Hillcrest Community Center. Uh, you have a pool, you have an ice rink, gymnastics gym, and a library. It's all quite new. It was built for the 2010 Olympics. Uh, so it's a pretty amazing facility to have. It's just on the outskirts of Little Mountain. Um, we also have two others. There's Mount Pleasant Community Center, which is to the north of Little Mountain. And then to the south, we have Sunset Community Center. Both of those community centers are a bit smaller, a little bit older, but both pretty new. And so there's, there's a lot to be offered at a really good value. Oh, and finally, I just wanted to mention Nat Bailey Stadium. If you live in uh, Little Mountain Riley Park, it's sort of a, it's a community amenity. It's, it's, it's within walkable distance. I was out the other day uh, and I saw, you know, neighbors going out because there was a game that night. And, uh, and they have a fireworks night, which can be a lot of fun. Um, it's, a, it's just a great fun place that's not too expensive. The tickets are 20 bucks, $24 or something like that. It can get a bit expensive when you start paying for a lot of food and a lot of drinks, of course. That's really where they're gonna make their money. But, uh, but no, you, you, you can have a couple snacks and uh, enjoy the afternoon. And it's uh, just an absolutely beautiful ballpark. Uh, it's a great place as the sun is setting. The sun just shines right in there and you definitely want some sunscreen and bring a hat. On the really hot days, you can really bake in there, but highly recommend checking out Matt Bailey Stadium if you ever get the chance. All right, let's talk schools. If you've seen my video about schools, which I'll link right there about finding schools in Vancouver, um, you'll know that no school is really that far away from anywhere in Vancouver. Uh, they're all within walking distance and that's the case in, in Riley Park. Uh, you're never very far away from an elementary school. Uh, and there's some excellent elementary schools in the area. General Brock, General Wolf, David Livingston, Sir Alexander Mackenzie. Charles Dickens is just on the edge, which is an incredibly popular elementary school as well. So lots of options when it comes to elementary schools. Um, and then uh, in terms of secondary schools, your two main ones um, sort of at the, at the southern end is uh, uh, John Oliver and then um, sort of halfway in is is uh, Sir Charles Tupper. And both are considered excellent schools um, because it's an excellent neighborhood. And, and honestly, you know, in Vancouver, the, the quality of the school kind of reflects the quality of the neighborhood. And so when you have such a strong neighborhood, the schools come along with that. Uh, but if you're thinking about sending your kid to private school, there aren't really any private schools in this uh, Riley Park community. There are some that are just on the outside. Stratford Hall is just to the east on Commercial Drive. Um, just to the west, you're gonna have Vancouver College and you're also gonna have Little Flower Academy and York House. So there are some really strong options when it comes to private schools as well, if that's what you're looking for. Be back to the video in a second, but I just wanted to say, if you're getting any kind of value, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more of me, because I do put out videos like this every single week about what it's like moving to Vancouver and what it's like living in the city of Vancouver and its suburbs, in fact. So um, do one of those two things, really appreciate it. Now let's get back to the video. All right, and housing, uh, that's you know a big thing, I think, if you're thinking of moving here that you're really gonna to wanna to understand. What are the different housing options? What are the prices like? You know, what does it look like? And whether you're thinking of owning or renting, these are all topics that I wanna get into, but I don't wanna do it here in the studio. I wanna take you outside so you can see it in person. You can't quite touch it, but you can, you're gonna be able to see it. And I'm gonna explain it to you. Let's, let's head outside and take a look. All right, so what's owning a house in Riley Park Little Mountain like? Well, there's, as you can see in behind me, there's some typical houses in this neighborhood. Mostly what you find are is older stock. And this area was developed primarily about 100 years ago. And from 100 years ago until around the time that I was born in the 1970s, there has been no new land to develop in this area for decades. And so you have a lot of these older houses, like the one in behind me that was probably built in the 1940s. Uh, and here's one that was likely built in the 80s, I would say. Um, but you have, you know, if you wanted to build a newer house, like the one back there, uh, you'd be buying an older house like the one in behind there and tearing it down to build 
the, the newer house. Typical houses in this neighborhood in the Main Street corridor are, are 2.1 million, in the Fraser corridor are 1.9 million. And as I mentioned before, the prices, that's, that's sort of an indication, of, as you can see, of prices getting uh, a better value going from west to east. More expensive in the west, less expensive in the east. So, you know, again, a house like this, likely the next time it sells, somebody is not going to keep that house. They're going to tear it down and build something considerably more more modern. And this area that I'm walking through, this, this block just happens to be, you know, a number of older houses that, um, that are still around. Um, but I'm coming up to some more some newer and more modern houses. Um, the newer houses in this neighborhood are going to cost somewhere in the three to three and a half million dollar range. Um, and all of these houses will typically have a basement suite. So basement suites are very, very common. Residents typically or owners of homes typically enjoy or need uh, some additional income on top of, you know, their, their, their usual income to help pay for the mortgage uh, because things are quite expensive. So it's a very common thing in Vancouver that there's an income generating suite. Um, most houses are roughly 2,200 square feet in this area. Uh, that includes the basement. Most of the lots are roughly 4,000 square feet. There's some areas where they're smaller. To help with the budget, you know, you're going to be able to, you're going to save some money or, or not spend as much if the house is smaller or if the house is older. Everything that's newer, bigger, obviously that's going to be more expensive. In behind me is a half duplex. It's a side-by-side -side half duplex. So that means uh, one entrance is pretty obvious. You can see it right behind me, but then the other one is on its, uh, is beside it and uh, down the side of the house a little bit. Actually, sorry, it's a front and back duplex. So uh, one family lives at the front of uh, this structure and then the other family lives in the back of the structure. You can see one entrance right behind me and then the other, other entrance is off the side of the house. These are pretty popular at the moment and more and more of them are being built, uh, making essentially a new home much more affordable. So as I mentioned, a new house could be three and a half million. A new half duplex might be 1.8 to $2 million in that kind of range. And there's also townhouses, of course, as well. And the real estate board, we don't divide townhouses and half duplexes, we combine them. So a typical price for a half duplex or a townhouse on Main Street is 1.2 million. And in, on Fraser, it's 1.4. So funny enough, uh, for the most part, you know, as I said, prices go up as you head west. In this case, it's the reverse. Prices are a little bit higher in the Fraser Corridor than they are in Maine. Um, but I would say typically you're going to see that uh, the half duplexes are most expensive. Uh, as I said, roughly $1.8 to $2 million for something pretty new. Uh, you might be paying $1.5 around there, $1.6 for something that's a little bit older. And then something that uh, more of a, of a townhouse is going to be most likely pretty new, pretty nice in the $1.5 million range uh, for both Maine and Fraser. So I'm in one of the areas um, in Little Mountain where there's some new development. And this is right below Queen Elizabeth Park. Uh, some really nice new buildings that have been built, uh, generally six stories tall, wood frame. But uh, these are pretty typical of, uh, of the new construction that you can find in the area. And Main Street, a typical condo is going to cost a million dollars. Uh, Fraser, it's a little bit less at 800000 um, That includes older and newer, of course. Um, and typically a two-bedroom is what you're going to find most commonly for condos. Um, and, and if you're looking for something that's a little bit larger, like a townhouse, or sorry, a three-bedroom, unfortunately, for the most part, you're going to have to be looking at townhouses and a half duplexes and houses. Uh, it's pretty rare that a condo gets to three bedrooms. Most of them at the most are two bedrooms and roughly about 900 square feet as a maximum size. Some of these in this area, though, have really beautiful rooftop decks and amazing view of the surrounding area. I highly recommend this neighborhood. There's just over my shoulder in the background, there's actually an old army barracks uh, that used to be social housing that's um, awaiting development and there's going to be thousands of new condos built. So this area, this is just south of 33rd, just west of Main Street. Um, it's going to see massive amounts of redevelopment in the next couple of years. And I think it's going to draw a lot of people to the area and make the area a lot more livable. Highly recommend having a look here. But there's a few other pockets of great development all around Little Mountain. I wanted to talk about renting in Little Mountain as well. And renting can be just as challenging as purchasing. Uh, you do have some options in Little Mountain. There are 
um, houses that you can rent, uh, townhouses, and condos, of course. Um, they've also started building a fair number of purpose-built rental buildings. Those are predominantly on Main and on Fraser. They are more expensive because they are brand new. Um, so if you have a healthy budget, um, that can be a good option. Um, but something that I wanted to draw your attention to is uh, sort of a, a fairly unique to Vancouver phenomenon in that most houses, as this house in behind me here, uh, it's a two-story house. The owners li live up above and then the downstairs is a suite and you can see the owner's entrance is at the front of the house. Um, this is the suite entrance in behind me. Um, so it's separated into two separate living quarters and this was what we would call a basement suite. And in Vancouver, because the cost of these houses is so high, I mean this house as an example might be worth two and a half million dollars, um, the people that own them generally take income or need the income from the suites in order to help pay the mortgage, especially with interest rates where they are these days. And so this as an example as a two bedroom basement suite. Um, this is actually a Vancouver special. And so it's basement is higher than most. It's over eight feet tall um, and it's not underground. It's not dark and dank. It's actually quite open and bright and you're entering basically at ground level. Um, and so these could rent two bedroom of this size, close to $3,000 uh, in this neighborhood. And if this was a condo, um, you might be paying 3,500 for it. And in those new rental buildings, it might be $3,800. So it's sort of a more affordable option. Of course, there are smaller options as well. There's studios and one bedrooms that would be cheaper. And I should also mention that there's the laneway house option in terms of renting. Those are usually a one bedroom, uh, one bedroom and den and could be around that $3,000 mark as well. So lots of good options if you're renting. Just remember if you are renting that nobody professionally represents tenants helping them find rentals in Vancouver. And what that means is you're kind of on your own and you got to be looking at places like Kijiji and Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. Do check out my video about renting in Vancouver. I'm going to link it right up here. I think I got the side right. Uh, if not, it's on that side. Uh, but that video is all about what it's like renting in Vancouver. And that's going to give you a big head start. All right, so that's Little Mountain, Riley Park, Maine and Fraser Corridor in the city of Vancouver. It's the hottest neighborhood in the city. It's been that way for years. I think you're going to have, after watching this video, a really strong understanding of why that might be. Hopefully, you're going to want to live in the neighborhood and, uh, and now you're going to know what to look for. So thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate you checking it all out. Hit that thumbs up and the subscribe button if you want to see more of me. I put out more videos like this every single week about living in Vancouver and about moving to Vancouver. And if, incidentally, you are thinking of moving to Vancouver, I've helped hundreds of families over my 15 year career as a real estate agent. Uh, that's what I do and I can help you as well. So reach out anytime and I'll see you on next week's video if I don't hear from you.